Hey, my name is Dave with Living Lightly. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to talk about collecting rainwater and using rainwater and filtering it down so it's good drinkable rainwater. And the reason I got started with it, uh, maybe the issues in, uh, in Flint and then there were, before that there were issues in Toledo, West Virginia, where large areas uh, of water uh, just turn toxic and undrinkable then when you start doing the research about just municipal water uh, you know the research on fluoride gets a little bit scary you know the debates are and, and the support of fluoride is pretty weak and the toxicity of what we're taking in uh, is, is pretty scary so I thought about collecting rainwater and figuring out what to do with it. Then what put me over the top was uh, I had a water leak, uh, you know, pipe leak main. And so we dug it up and, you know, looked on the inside. And I don't know that you can really see the level of grossness in there, but it is like caked up nastiness. Yeah maybe in there you could see a little bit but it, it's just the crust on there is horrible imagine you know drinking water through this like a straw I'm like no way so that kind of did it for me uh, so I started with my roof I'll be collecting rainwater off my roof so I went to a steel roof so I'll have a, a cleaner area I'm not picking water up right off asphalt and then I had to get rid of some of the trees on top of the house so I don't have any, you know, any, minimize any birds up there, minimize any, any debris and clogging and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get right into showing you my system. So and from a steel roof. Through this one spout. into this screen. Lift it up, I have a fine mesh screen. Um, this clogs up pretty quick. So you have to be diligent doing like really after every storm, clean it out. Ooh. So in the barrel. We have, uh, I put the outflow about two inches higher. Yeah, about two inches higher. So I'll trap some of the finer sediment, the dust and stuff in the bottom two inches of the tank. So this acts as my first flush. I have a valve on the inside that can shut everything off. I also have a disconnection valve right here, uh, so if I need to clean out this tank, you know, once a month or so, then I can just disconnect it and hose it out. Um, this is my overflow, so if I shut the valve off on the intake on the inside, this tank can fill up and overflow and get away from the house. And this will go in. We are inside. Here's that intake pipe. I believe it's a one inch. Here's that valve so I can control the water flow inside if I just need to just stop everything down. Yeah, do this. The water flows down this pipe. And the first filter here is um, a coffee filter. So one of those wire mesh coffee filters. And it's sealed around by, there's a, a rubber seal around there. And I'm going to back us up, just give us a quick overview of the setup. So I, I can, uh, I have room for two tanks in here, because I keep a lot of firewood in here too. So I have tanks. We have uh, food grade barrels. So when you are hunting for barrels, make sure they're food grade. Also make sure you can lift the entire lid off. Don't get the ones that are sealed, you know, with just a small hole. 
because on occasion you need to clean these up. On the inside we have, let me move all this aside here. Okay, we are gonna take a look inside. And my little uh, fish aquarium net right here, uh, just in case I was working on it or doing something, something drops inside, I can pick it up uh, down here. So this is all collected rainwater. Uh, there is a screen on, on just about everything, everything that's going in to the system. There's a screen on it in case um, something gets in there I don't want. Uh, minimize any debris before they get to the really efficient filters. Um, so that's, I daisy chained these two together. So there is one drain down there. Here's an overflow. So if I get topped off, see, I don't know, just keep raining, 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 filling up, filling up. I can't always watch it. So this would be the overflow goes down and across my basement into another tank. And so this is the tank that receives the overflow. Uh, and it also will feed the toilet. So the overflow here has pumps in it and I'm able to turn those pumps on from the bathroom and feed the toilet water with the overflow that is in this tank. Uh, and then if this fills up and overflows, a float pump on the top, uh, now I'm not gonna get into this too much. There's a float pump in there, and then that will pump the water into you know, one of these blue tubes. One goes to the toilet, and the other one goes into, um, well, this, the septic system. So it kind of goes behind the actual, the washer, right? of upstairs and into the drain. So it, was, it would be the same as uh, the washer draining it, draining itself out, the overflow float pump would pump it up down to that pipe and out into the system. Anyway, but I wanna show you about drinking water. So we do have overflow systems in place. Uh, here is the overview. These tanks are daisy chained together. I'll try to get a good view here. But specifically how to, um, you know, put a pipe uh, into, you know, and, and a spigot into a barrel, we are gonna save that for another video. That just gets a little bit too how-to, and I just want to give you an overview and show you how this is possible and how I've done it in my home. Sure, there might be a better way. There's always someone that knows better, but this is what I've got, and it's working fantastic. Uh, it would have been better if I had had a disconnect valve from these so I could wash the tanks easier. Another option would have been going, taking this pump, so that's the pump we're looking at, and running it right over the top, drawing water out from the top. I chose to bring it from underneath, and that way uh, we never have to prime uh, the pump. It's always just, you know, if there's water in the tank, it goes right into the pump. Don't have to prime it, don't have to fuss with it pump pushes water out. I may, I should have probably put my first sediment filter here before it got in the pump so I don't maybe damage the pump or get it, let it get dirty. But, miss that. Might be okay. My first sediment filter. And again, that, and just to get in I don't want to get into too much detail on what filter is best because each one serves a different purpose. You go from a coarse filter, you know, just sediment filter uh, to a, you know, carbon and then maybe ceramic. Uh, it depends on what you're using it for. If you're just using it to wash your, to uh, water your garden, well, that's going to be different than if you're going to be drinking the water. I am drinking it. Uh, then our pump, 
pushes it through this filter and into this pressure tank. So really what I have is a well system. I have a shallow well system. So if you go to the big box store and say, I'm putting in a shallow well, can you help me out? They'll probably direct you to all these parts and pieces that you need, you know, pressure gauges and, um, you know, overflow valves and, you know, pressure valves and PEX piping, things like that. So it pressurizes in this tank and stores in there, runs through another set of filters. And I have, you know, off valves, things like whenever I need to change the filters, which I did today, um, you know, they have automatic shutoffs. I like these DuPont. They work fantastic. Um, go online. If you want really high grade filters for drinking, go online, find some good ceramic things. Um, these are one micron right in here. Um, and then I have, yeah, one more going to go in. So, okay, the water feeds into the system. I do not cross lines with my home water, okay? Uh, I definitely don't do that um, because the pressure in the city water is different than the pressure in my rain collection. So you just, you can't, you, know, you can't cross it and it wouldn't be up to code at all. Um, so I have a completely separate system. So I have two systems, one, my conventional water two my rain collection system that I have separate spigots for. So let's go upstairs and figure out where it goes. All right. This is a little unconventional, so bear with me. We'll try and figure this out. We'll go slow. Uh, I do have two spigots, one for conventional, one for rain, but we're going to reverse engineer this a little bit, figure out how we got there. Okay. First that pipe that went from the pressure tank comes up into the bathroom. Yeah, we'll show you where that T goes. And then it goes into the kitchen through the bathroom. So let's go kitchen runs through <laughs> across the ceiling and into this spigot. I kind of thought it would be cool to just put a little garden hose spigot on there. All right. And now we have a Berkey filter. So if anything did get through, well, Berkey's going to take care of that. So I just pop the top. And then I have my rainwater filling. Ooh, shut that up. It's going to fill up. Filtering down. So that is my drinking water, right? Let's go back to the back in the bathroom. Remember we came up out of our pressure tank from the basement. There's that T. One goes up into the kitchen and the other one goes back down into the basement with a valve, goes back down into the basement. We're outside suddenly. Um, it went through the basement, back outside of the house, into this copper tube, and into this heating panel, because I want to heat up the water, because I want to take hot showers, with rainwater. All right, let's explain this. First, I tried to heat it up through these coils in this solar heating panel, which is glass, a space, and then black steel. So there's a chamber in here that heats up uh, to about maybe 170 degrees. I thought it might heat up the water real well in these coils, but there are not enough coils. Uh, the coils might be too thick, uh, whatever it is. Won't heat up, not enough. 
I would have needed to run them, you know, several, like a, a dozen or more small pipes running up and down. The reason I have it in this big zigzag is because I want to be able to drain it out in the winter. If it's freezing and no sun, I don't want the pipes to break. So I have it this crazy, you know, this big zigzag. What would have worked better is to have, you know, copper pipe down at the bottom and then feeder lines all the way up. I don't know that I could take on that project. So I just ran it up here and instead I created uh, a batch of a batch water solar heater. Up inside there is uh, a tank, a water tank that's been, uh, that's been stripped down. It's a water heater that's been stripped down to the core and I will show you a clip right now of what's on the inside that I took right before I sealed it up. So right now it is a heated chamber that is heating up a big tank of water and from there it's gravity fed because I got nervous about um, heating up water uh, in a pressurized situation where the sun is hitting it and I don't know I'm just worried about blowing up a pipe or a tank or something like that so I'm very happy to have it gravity fed uh, into the bathroom and yes I have to remodel the outside uh, I'll get it fixed up but for now it's what it looks like I'm gonna back you up show you the tower I had to make and if you're wondering what that whirly thing on top there is just a weather station so it tells me the temperature, how much it rains, stuff like that. Good to know how much it rains versus how much water I'm taking in and things like that. Uh, and this heating panel serves two purposes. Those uh, PV panels kick on a fan down in there, pushes air, the hot air through and into the bedroom, you know, on a sunny winter day 140 degree air blowing in the bedroom it's pretty nice all right here we go we are up here this is the tank uh copper tube going in the top there's just a little opening in there drops right in i'm not even sealing it up because the whole chamber will be sealed so i'm not going to get any bugs this is the overflow comes down the side goes onto the roof runs down the roof, into the gutters, back into the storage tanks. So here we go with the tank. Uh, I left the base with some insulation around it because it stands upright that way. It's rounded at the ends if I pulled that base off. So I just cut around it, stripped it down, paint it black. The inside are steel panels. They were roofing panels. I also painted them black and here's the outflow no valve on it it's gravity fed and yeah, you can see where it comes out down there into the bathroom so that's what it, it looks like before it's sealed up and becomes a nice heated chamber All right, and there we are. So there's the pipe that's coming in. I just, because I like this industrial look, I covered my PEX pipe with a black pipe. So what you're seeing, the rust and things like that, it's just decorative. So I have one that brings me in hot water. And if the water ends up heating up too much, I brought in a cold line of rainwater from yeah, the other side. So where it originally came in to the bathroom, I could steal a little bit of that cold water and mix it. Yeah, mix it right in there. So let's try it out. Oh, I'm going to get it. So it is a perfectly good shower. 
Yep. And it is really nice and warm. Cool. Like your wife will not think so, but it is. Um, and then this is my conventional shower. So traditional water, you know, coming through the lines. Um, I'll shower with that. And if I have some nice warm rainwater, solar heated rainwater, I prefer to use that. Feels fantastic, feel really clean. Um, you don't feel the hardness of the water, it's just nice and soft and clean. So that is my tour. And I'll probably cover a couple of questions that'll probably come up, uh, the cost. The whole system put together is probably just under a thousand dollars. Is it worth it? To me it is. Uh, that's what I wanted to do and I kind of got piece by piece and um, and yeah I'm real happy with the system and it's going to last a very 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 long time. So I think it was uh, worth the investment. Uh, next issue you're probably thinking about uh, health. You go, ooh, it's, it's not healthy to drink rainwater. Well, I've, I've heard it put uh, fantastic one way. Uh, a doctor said, well, you can either have, uh, you know, uh, diarrhea today or cancer tomorrow. I haven't had any issues. I haven't had any health issues whatsoever. Um, and, and really, we had to really think it through and, and research it out and use a lot of common sense. Um, you know, my perspective, everyone has to make their own decision, what they're comfortable with. But, you know, my perspective uh, was like hey we're we're going in the toilet sending it downtown where they process um, in in this uh, so we can drink it okay so if you're really worried about health uh, you know that's that's what I would look at first um, and it's like oh but there's stuff in the air that the rain is is pulling down and it's mixing in your water uh, yeah you're breathing it in anyway um, it's already there. Uh, the other issue is, you know, hey, it rains on my on my tomatoes, right? And so all the, you know, rain. So food, or all of our food gets rained on constantly. Um, and then we take that in. And we don't think twice about it. Uh, I go, oh, you know, there could be like a mosquito or something in the... And, you know, we get a mosquito on us, and we don't think twice, right? <laughs> so, I, I think we get a little hyper-concerned, you know, with our, you know, with, with water in particular, when we should be concerned about, you know, everything, you know, the air we breathe and the food we eat. See, I don't put my food under uh, ultraviolet light, you know, to get rid of every last possible bacteria. Um, so if I'm not that concerned about it in other areas, you know, I, I, I should take that level of concern, you know, to all areas. Uh, what I've concluded was that if there is not a host uh, for any microbes, um, then they're going to be inert or non-existent. Uh, they need a host. And I filter things out uh, to a half micron and then put it through the Berkey filter, which takes out 99.99 and of anything so I'm probably very much in the safe zone and I haven't had any health issues those are my thoughts and my perspective on it but everyone has their own take and everyone has to make their own decisions uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching uh, please subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel please visit my Facebook at facebook.com forward slash urban off grid uh, living lightly page I'd appreciate it. I'm trying to build it up and show you a lot of other things I have going on here uh, to help you and as I work on living lightly. Okay, thank you.